So in general, I just think that there are things in life that we don't think is good for us and therefore we don't do it. This is basically gonna be a story about how I did something that I thought was the exact opposite of what I should be doing and it basically being the best decision of my life. When I was about 17, uh, I had lost over 100 pounds. Um, I'm not gonna get into huge detail about that, but I lost a lot of weight and I like published a book and all, just all this crazy stuff was happening, but I didn't like the community. I didn't like what was going on with it, so I got out of it. Food has always been the centerpiece for me. That has always been my key point in what I've always wanted to do. So that was never gonna change when I pulled out of that. But I didn't really know where to go. I promised myself that I would never ever work in a restaurant and I understood it and I respected it, but it was just something that I was too scared of. You know, the, not just the professionalism, but just the attention to detail, the intensity, the insane hours, the low pay. And it got to a point where I just had no money. I was an adult, I was on my own, I had rent to pay, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't want, I didn't really want to go to college because I felt capable enough to make something of myself with my own skills. And if I had to work a hundred times harder, then I would be happy to do it. So I basically just said, screw it, and just got a restaurant job and I started. I didn't really stay at the first one or the second one. And then I went to one where I actually stayed. And then inevitably, I actually ended up getting fired from that job. That's when I started questioning everything. I didn't know if I had made the right decision. I decided one more restaurant to see whether or not I want to stick with restaurants at all. If this is gonna be it, the decision-making moment, then I'm gonna pick the best restaurant in town, the best restaurant in the entire city, entire state. All right, Django. Super Bowl 51. Yama, so far. Yeah, this is very serious, the guy. My first immediate experience being in this was just full of like wonderment. It was, it was just exciting and scary at the same time. I remember walking in and the first thing that you see at the door is literally be precise, our margin of error is small. And I remember when I saw that the first time and I was like, man, I'm gonna find out real quick whether or not this is gonna work out. Over the years that I spent there though, I ended up just starting to realize that, there, that it's almost like this secret world that is full of all these life experiences and moments and just like feelings of gratitude that I feel like most people don't get to experience in almost their entire professional lives. It takes a long time for people to learn how to value really small things. It's the ability to figure out what you value and put that into play that makes people good at what they do. I felt like my ego was way too big and I specifically went to a restaurant that I knew would totally destroy my ego. And if you say anything stupid, you're just totally crushed. I'm glad that I experienced that. That brought my ego down enough to be able to constantly push myself and never, ever, ever bullshit myself. And the more that you can minimize that, the better off you're gonna be. One of the things about the restaurant industry that I think is, you know, bad and yet beautiful at the same time is that it's an environment that's so hostile and so intense and yet at the, at the very end of it, the level of camaraderie, almost family-like relationships that you have with these people, the shit that you guys go through together and you're, you're beaten up and you're just totally spent by the end of the day and people still keep coming back and going back because they absolutely love it. I'm sorry, but like most people are just being fake to each other. At least in the restaurant industry, you know these motherfuckers are being real with you and if they give you their respect, that is real. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hay. I won't get a ball today. Got lost in the ball and days. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the all record off record. I still count wins when they got it on record off record. I. And it sounds cruel and it sounds mean, but it's like that level of push. It's it's lucky if you get that level of push, because you will prove so much more dramatically 
If you don't have someone that's like pandering to your, just your feelings, how can I cut this one thing better? How can I sharpen my knife just slightly better? And all these little tiny collective experiences are just chipping away at, at this one big thing. So I feel like a lot of the time people will see a cook or a chef or, or anybody professionally. It doesn't even have to be a cook. It could be anybody, a businessman, and, and you, you only see the end result. You only see that person at their supreme value. They're like, oh my God, how does this, this person just so gifted? It's like, what you don't see is the tiny little things that that person has had to do to get there. And it was tiny little things that felt like nothing, but only added up over time. So that brings me to my last part, which is I announced that I had left this restaurant after being there for over two years. And honestly, I've, I've dealt with a lot of shit in my life personally. Although like a really intense, stressful environment offered me a group of people that like taught me how to fucking push through the fucking shit the right way. Probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever made to have to leave this place. But I also knew that I needed to in order to grow. And B, because I, because of you guys, because I mean, it sounds like I'm blaming you, but because of you guys in terms of like this YouTube channel, it's like uh, at the time of filming this, we're getting close to 300,000 subscribers, which is uh, mind blowing to me. Like I'm eternally grateful. So at this point, a lot of people have asked me the question, which is why have you left Uchiko and what's next? First half has been answered, but as for the second half, what's next? I mean, there's a lot of answers to that. There's a lot of things that are next. I would rather not give it all away right now and keep it a mystery because that's how I like to do things. But I mean, you're looking at one of them, so I can tell you that much.